Pretty awesome. You're looking at the Moeller Sky Car. It made headlines in 2002 when the flying car took flight in Davis. The inventor promised to take his prototype to production, but that has not happened yet. So we sent out ABC 10's John Bartell to see why. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Back to the Future predicted we would all be traveling in flying cars by 2015. <laughs> But to our disappointment, all we got in 2015 was a lame version of the hoverboard. There's been many attempts at flying cars, some practical, others never really took off. But in 2002, a Davis man gave new hope for the flying car. Flying cars. Just unbelievable. Your car could fly. Just like the Jetsons. For over a decade, news outlets around the world replayed this video of the sky car hovering off the ground in Davis. We've got all the components to, to put the vehicle together. Dr. Paul Muller is his name, and the news was infatuated with his sky car. Fascinating. Very cool. Yeah. For a time, it seemed like Back to the Future's prediction would come true. I'll need to go in here and turn on some lights for you. But then when 2015 came, nothing happened. What's been the holdup all these years so far? Well, there's all, money's always a factor, of course. Turns out flying cars are really expensive to develop. Which meant it was very hard to get support. Paul dedicated his life to flying vehicles, and funding has always slowed him down. To attract investors, he constructed this flying saucer vehicle in his garage. He got a lot of attention when he flew it for the media back in 1989. What you end up doing is you get investors, but that's never enough, so you've got to create products the tide you over. Paul's flying car would go through a number of development changes. And to pay for those changes, Paul invented this. It's, it's like a jetpack then, huh? You could call it a jetpack. Basically, it's a gas-powered fan that was supposed to push skiers up a mountain and bikers up a hill. How many times have you worn this? I have never actually worn it myself. But <laughs> For obvious safety reasons, Paul didn't sell many jetpacks, but the jetpack's specially designed muffler turned out to be profitable. Every race car at Atlanta used our, our muffler. Super Trap is what Paul called the muffler, and he made a bunch of money off it. Enough money to continue developing an engine for his flying car. Designed around the Wankel principle. The Wankel rotary engine. It's a lightweight, high-powered motor that could lift the sky car, but the engine's power also caught the attention of the U.S. government. So y you were developing drones before drones were actually a thing? Yes, in the, in the late 80s, we flew over the heads of the FBI, CIA, and NSA. Paul got a number of government contracts to develop the rotary engine. He even put the motor in a generator, a car, and even a scooter. Paul says he proved that the engine was both practical and reliable, but in the end, the government didn't want the rotary engine. So what's it doing in the, the, the back garage here? Well, it's really waiting for our engines to be in production. The government wouldn't help Paul, so he had to find private investors to mass produce the rotary engine for the flying car. Unfortunately, contract negotiations are taking longer than he thought. So in the meantime, Paul is working to solve a different problem. There's enough manure in the world to provide half the energy in the United States per year. Methane is bad for the environment. Paul says cows and people are creating a lot of it, and he wants to clean it up by putting the methane in his rotary engine. Toilet gas, cow farts. Everything like that. Car manure and human waste have a lot of hydrogen sulfide. You cannot use that in an engine. It would avoid the warranty immediately. We don't have any problem with that in our engine. Paul has done extensive tests on the rotary engine using methane, and he hopes one day that someone will generate power with it can help the world and make money at the same time. That's a nice combination. Paul is now 80 years old, and despite what skeptics say, he plans on seeing the flying car in production. All right, so I don't see any cup holders in this thing. After a few modifications, of course. In Dixon, John Bartell, ABC 10 News.